Greetings fellow warriors and welcome back to another Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord video. After a long, long wait, Tailwords has finally delivered a new patch for one of our favorite games. And I am here as always to inform you about the stuff that I deem to be the most important additions and changes for the game. To keep the video as short and digestible as possible. If possible at all. Because this patch is really a fucking kraken. So stuff like new armor, new game mechanics, new quests and much much more will be covered here. That's why, as always, I recommend checking out the patch notes yourself. The link for that will be in the description. Also, only a small percentage of you beautiful warriors currently watching this video are actually subscribed to the channel. So it would be very nice if you could do just that. It's free, takes less time than eating a whole stick of butter. And you can always change your mind later, if you remember that you actually don't even like me and I'll be able to stop this god awful intro. Much obliged. Or even become a channel member. I've updated a lot of stuff and even added a new tier if you want to support me even further, like some of you already do. But enough talking. You're here for the patch notes, right? So let's dive in to the patch notes. As always, Tailwords released a bunch of crash and performance fixes to alleviate these issues. I won't really go over the crash stuff, but if you were actually crashing a ton in a given situation, you should absolutely check the patch notes out yourself, like I already mentioned. Talking about performance fixes though, they say that they fixed various lag spikes, especially in siege missions, improved the general siege CPU performance, fixed CPU usage spikes that occurred in battles, improved loading times and a bunch of optimizations regarding the AI and pathfinding. You know me. I'm always putting these to the test to tell you how my game runs after all these fixes and yeah, it, it does feel like the game is even more responsive on the campaign map. But where it truly shined for me were sieges which ran much smoother even when having 1000 units on the battlefield. Of course, this can be different from rig to rig, I've got a pretty beefy one so yeah, you'll have to test this out for yourself really. Regarding the art direction, they've added 4 new battle scenes and 6 new town scenes. And I'm already sorry for the pronunciation, which are Fukaion, Diethma, Seniopia, Epicrotee and Denustica. They've also added 5 new Azurai shoulder pieces. The bronze scale shoulder guards, which look like this. The long sleeve bronze scale shoulder guards. The bronze scale pauldrons. The decorated bronze scale pauldrons, which I can't seem to find, and the decorated long sleeve bronze scale pauldrons. They also added something for Vlandia. Finally, after all this time, Vlandia gets some love too, with the ornate pauldrons, the ornate pauldrons with cape, the reinforced ornate pauldrons over scale, the pauldrons with cape and scale shoulder guards. I really like how some of these look, especially this and this one. What do you think about these new shoulder guards? Tell me down below in the comment section. Were they worth the wait or nah? Continuing in the art department, they've also added 6 new Azurai helmets. The Brass Southern Closed Helmet. The Brass Southern Closed Helmet with Turban. The Brass Southern Helmet. The Brass Southern Helmet with Turban. The Brass Southern Helmet with Leather Flaps and the brass turbaned helmet with leather flaps, as well as 4 new Azurai body armor, including the southern reinforced male armor, the southern reinforced sleeveless male armor, the southern reinforced male vest and the southern reinforced short male armor, and one new cape for the empire called the heavy cloak. Finally some new armor for us to play with. Like I said, especially the Vlanian stuff was heavily needed. The art guys really knock it out every time when it comes to new 3D models. I mean, I am no expert at all, but in the eyes of a mere non-3D expert plebeian, they look pretty nice. Now, this was something I've been waiting for for a long time and no, sadly no Ricardo. It's actually one of my favorite features in this patch. Scene notifications aka cutscenes. These have been introduced to give more weight to events. They can open automatically or be triggered with a circle notification. Right now there are generic cutscenes like the birth of your child, marriage, your heir coming of age, death of old age, main hero dies in battle, clan member dies in two variations, joining a kingdom, creating a kingdom and kingdoms getting destroyed. Some of them you can already see in the background footage but that's not all. 
They also added cutscenes for main storyline events, such as a supported faction getting defeated, finding the banner pieces in three variations, pledging allegiance, conspiracy in two variations and declaring the dragon banner. Hell yeah! More immersion like this please. These cutscenes add so much to make the game actually feel alive. Now, I told you about the main hero death cutscene. Well, as you can already guess, this implies that the player can now die in battles and you're completely right. Tailwords introduced a new hero death in combat option. For that, there are three available sub options such as disable all battle deaths, disable battle deaths player only and enable all battle deaths. Settlement values within the encyclopedia are now restricted to settlements that you are near or within your kingdom or where a clan member is inside. Regarding combat, Tailwords made some armor effectiveness improvements. They reduced the armor coefficient from 100 to 50. That means that one armor value now provides two health points against plant attacks. So let's say your armor has a value of 50. That means that it will now provide 100 health points against blunt attacks. All combat mechanics such as knockdown, knockback and dismount are now decided using a standard and deterministic model. All weapons that can apply these effects have their relevant flag which are displayed on weapon tooltips. Regarding battles in general, they've implemented an improved system for spawning reinforcements in battles. Reinforcements will now always spawn near the deployment boundaries of the battle. The initial wave of troops always spawns on the original path with respect to the position of the battle, on the campaign map and the battle size. There are two new spawn paths. One path counterclockwise to the original path and one path clockwise to the original path. So essentially, they won't spawn inside ongoing battles but rather move in from the side of the scene. They will pick the safest spawn path from these three with the safest one being the one that's the furthest away from the enemy. They also changed the AI to use the formation's total power, so including all unspawned troops, to decide battle tactics. Rather than just going YOLO when the initial wave spawns with only looters or low level units. Regarding the character development system, you can now reset your characters and companions perks assignments through the arena master for a suitable price. At last, even the arena master now has a good purpose. Regarding clans and parties, you can now exchange the leader of a clan party, assign a new party leader for a clan party if the party leader has died, recall a clan member to your party if they are staying in a settlement which is grand and send off clan members to stay at one of your towns or castles. AI clans will also assign a party leader if the party leader is dired and if there is one available. They will also change party leaders if there is a better one available. Personally, I hope that this will alleviate the issue that literal peasants are leading parties in a clan. Now something that may seem small but could be actually big is that hero party leaders now have preferred troop types when upgrading. In the past, everyone just recruited the same kind of troop type but after this patch, this won't be the case anymore. Lords will recruit specific troop types more often, so let's say you want to fight against Empress Ragea. You do damn well know that she prefers cavalry troops after seeing her having a massive cavalry charge you in the last battle. That's why you get a lot of units with long spears to create a pike wall and voila! You actually had to think a little bit about how you approach this battle rather than just forcing it with your army. That doesn't mean that you can't force it but it adds a little bit more variety to how we have to approach fights against different lords and ladies. And as they say, variety is the spice of life. They also added marriage offers, which will be received via a circle map notification for single clan members. Regarding armies, they've improved the campaign map AI by adjusting the decision of patrol, defend and besiege stances to increase the siege success rates and aggressiveness of AI armies. The creation chance of an army decreases with each active army. This is done so that there are fewer but bigger armies and they will now assemble near a friendly settlement that is closest to the target enemy settlement, reducing the travel time to the target. Thank god for this fix. I can't tell you how often an army would form in the middle of your kingdom while there's a hefty war going outside on its borders. I lost so many castles and towns this way. Hopefully this fix alleviates this. I haven't tested it enough to give you my opinion on it, but here's to hoping. Regarding kingdoms and diplomacy, Tailwords added a variety of new offers to the game. Mercenary offers will be sent to the player by faction rulers. They can be accepted without talking to the faction ruler. 
The other one are vassalage offers, which will also be sent by the faction ruler. These notifications act as an invite to join the faction ruler for a discussion on potential vassalage. This and the cutscene feature are big, big improvements to more immersion to the game and I would love to see even more stuff like this in the future. Regarding economy and trade, they've added a new village type, camel ranches. I assume their main production will be different types of camels, but I can't seem to find any. Regarding crafting, they separated the crafting piece unlocking experience into the respective weapon types. Crafting a weapon now collects XP for that weapon type only, and any unlocked part will be available for that weapon type alone. Also, crafting parts will now be unlocked gradually, so tier 1 parts first, followed by tier 2 and so on. They've added 14 new heads and 5 new handles which can be used for the creation of two-handed maces in the smithy. 10 two-handed maces created out of these pieces have also been added to the marketplace and various troops. Mashallah brother, with these new crafting pieces you can create some real monsters. Previously we only had like the wooden handle and hammer heads, so it's nice to see two-handed maces getting some love. Regarding settlement actions, you can now play board games with clan members. There have been a lot of fixes and updates regarding quests and issues, like updated quest logs, alternative solution rewards, durations and requirements for various quests and much much more. Regarding conversations and encounters, tables improve the recognition of the player by NPCs in dialogues. If a player has high or low relations with an NPC, but they are not famous, the NPC will still know their name. For example, NPCs should know who has been attacking their villages or caravans. Furthermore, they improved NPC comments in dialogues when the player becomes a mercenary, as well as improvements to NPC conversations with work employees, to flow more smoothly and provide more information. So these are the changes I find the most important. There is still a lot a lot of stuff in these patch notes that I didn't touch upon. But I don't want this video to be too long. Everyone's time should be valued and I could potentially talk 20 minutes or more about this patch because it's really damn big. I had to download 12 gigs, so that's how you know that it's a huge one. Anyway, this is it for this patch rundown. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button. It would help out tremendously and show me that you want to see more content like this in the future. And while you're at it, why not simply subscribe too? That would really, really make my day. And if you want, you can even become a channel member. Join my Discord server, where you can talk with me and other like-minded people. And I'll see you all in my next video. Become a warrior today and bye. Another huge shout out to Clinky Man, Max M, Chains, Ed Kiner, Paralyzed, and all the other channel members for supporting the channel.